Hi guys, it's Sarah with Something's Pretty Special and today I'm coming to you to share the cupcake process video. Now I chat a little bit more in depth about this project in a previous video called Chatty Update so if you haven't already please go check that out as well. This project is using the Graphic 45 Imagine Collection and I purchased the 12 by 12 pattern paper collection pack and then I also purchased the 12 by 12 dots and stripes or solids and stripes additional paper that coordinates with the collection. It was from that coordinating paper where this blue paper came from and I really like the floral pattern that you see on the other side that I choose to use as the base cover for my cupcake stand. So all I did was I traced out those cake boards onto the pattern paper I wanted to use and I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. Now for the cake boards I just purchased a package of 8 inch round cake boards at my local Hobby Lobby. You can find them over in the baking section and you should be able to find them in the baking section of pretty much any of your big box stores that carry baking and craft supplies. So I took two of the rounds and I glued them together using my Helmars craft adhesive and I let them sit overnight weighted down with some books. I really wanted to make sure that they glued together well and were sturdy. And then once I did that, you now you see me here covering them with the patterned paper. And two of them just provides a little bit sturdier of a base and it also makes the edge of them thicker so that I can add some lace and trim later on in the project. So once I get them glued down with my art glitter glue, I'm going to trim off any excess that I might have if I my paper shifted or anything like that. Now for the art glitter glue, it worked really well in this project. I didn't have any warping or buckling or wrinkling with any of my papers. And I sometimes get that with other wet glues, so I'm really happy with my art glitter glue. And I would definitely recommend to anyone that is on the fence about trying it to pick it up and give it a go. I, like I said, I have not had any warping or buckling or wrinkling or any of those problems I tend to have with the scotch glue with this one. So, and I really do like the super fine point applicator. It has worked great for some of the details gluing that I needed to do um, on a couple other projects that I've had going on as well. When I'm trying to get, you know, that super fine bead of glue, that applicator tip has worked wonders. So definitely a thumbs up. Now I'm just trying to find the center of those cake boards and I'm just marking where I want to glue that glass candlestick that's going to provide the height for my project. Now these candlesticks I have just collected over the last couple years from thrift stores, antique malls, things like that. They're nothing fancy, they're not crystal, there's no maker's marks or anything like that. I actually think you can probably get something similar at the dollar store. I know I've seen glass candlesticks somewhat like that at my dollar store. So if you don't have a thrift store available, maybe check out your dollar store. Now I decide not to glue that together just yet. So I set it off to the side and then I'm going to look through the pattern papers here. Although I don't do much looking. I settle pretty quickly on this piece of paper that was on the top. It's got a wonderful floral and steampunk teapot pattern with some butterflies. And I'm going to use this to make my cupcake liner. And by liner, I just mean that nice cupcake wrapper with the accordion folds that you see um, when you eat a cupcake. And I wanted something with a lot of color and pattern just to provide some interest because you will see that, you know, pretty predominantly in the finished product. So I cut two strips at three and a quarter tall by 12 inches long and I then am cutting them with a border punch. It's a Martha Stewart punch and I just want that decorative edge along the top of my cupcake liner kind of where the liner meets my frosting which is what I call the flowers that I put on the cupcake. Now in retrospect I should have punched after I did the scoring. But it turned out okay because that punch isn't very delicate. There's not a lot of intricate design to it. But if you were using a punch that had a little bit more of an intricate design, I would recommend punching after you score and before you fold just to ensure that the scoring doesn't damage any of your punch design. 
So for the scoring, I did score these pieces every quarter of an inch along the 12 inch side and that just gives me a really nice tight accordion fold um, for the wrapper and I had done a test piece where I scored it every half inch and it was really just too wide in between the mountains and the valleys on the accordion fold and I didn't like how it looked. It looked kind of sloppy, I guess is maybe the best way I can describe it. So that's why I did do the quarter of an inch. And I know it's a little tedious here folding it back and forth for two pieces, you know, on the 12 inch side with every quarter of an inch, but it really does provide that nice tight accordion folded look to the cupcake liner. And I think it really adds a lot of detail to the project. And when you're doing a project on this scale, at least for myself, I really like to make sure that I capture all of those tiny details even though you know it's going to take some extra time because all of those tiny details put together are what make your overall project in my opinion look really nice and well thought out and, and completed. So once I get all of these accordion folded and I kind of fiddle with them to make sure my you know I didn't miss or do two mountains and two valleys and all of that. I am going to glue them together into one long strip and then I'm going to take that strip and measure it around the styrofoam ball there that will be the center of my cupcake. Now that is just a four inch styrofoam ball I purchased at my local craft store and it you want to make sure your ball's a little bit smaller than what you want your final finished project to be because you are going to bulk it up a little bit with the papers and some of the extra stuff that you put on. So I knew I wanted my cupcake to be large and I was figuring kind of in that five to six inch range when it was done. So a four inch center was perfect. So now I'm just gluing that paper wrapper to the outside of the styrofoam ball. And it takes a little bit of finessing to do because you want to make sure that your cupcake has that nice V shape that a, a real cupcake has. And by V shape, I mean where the top is flared out a little bit and then it narrows in smaller towards the bottom. And it just gives it a really nice shape when it's sitting on the pedestal. There's not a lot that will hide the base of that cupcake, which is why I wanted to make sure that all of that came out really well. Now, for my frosting, I decided to use punched paper flowers to cover the styrofoam ball. And to make my flowers, I just took some old book pages that I had and I dyed them with my inks and my sprays. So I think I used some Heidi Swap spray, some Lindy Stamp Gang spray. I think I watered down some of my Jane Davenport mermaid markers. Really just whatever I had on hand that was in the shades I wanted. And what I used for shades were some light purples, a little bit of gold, and kind of a tealy blue that matches that blue paper I used for the base. So once I got my papers dyed, I then hand punched out just a ton of the flowers that you see there. And the punch I used for the flowers, I think I got at Hobby Lobby, but honestly, it's something I've had in my stash for quite a while, so I'm not 100% sure. I apologize. Part of my goal with this project was to use up a lot of things that I had in my stash, so some stuff I've had for, oh gosh, you know, 8, 10 years, so I'm not sure if it's still something that you can find at a store today if you needed to purchase it. Now, I didn't throw away the scraps from punching out all of those flowers. I actually set them to the side and I'm using them here to collage over that styrofoam ball. And the reason I'm doing that, one, there's a little bit of a gap between the wrapper and the ball. And it's a little bit tricky to get the flowers to bridge that gap. They're not, I probably could have used a little bit larger of a punch on the bottom row of flowers if I had one, but I didn't and I wanted it to remain consistent throughout. So my solution to make sure I didn't have any gaps or you couldn't see that styrofoam, especially around that bottom edge, was just to collage some of that leftover book page behind it. And then at the top, I just did it as well. And it just ensures that if someone is looking at your collage, 
I'm sorry, if someone's looking at your project up close, when they peer through those flowers, they are not going to see any styrofoam. The styrofoam is a pretty stark white in contrast to the book page, so it does kind of stick out. And to me, my eye catches on it, so I just wanted to make sure that if someone were to be looking down at that cupcake, it's just going to, they're just going to see more book page behind the flowers. And I think it just adds another dimension and detail to the project. So when I start pinning the flowers, as you can see here, I'm starting at the bottom and I'm working my way up towards the top center. I found that to be the easiest just because you really want to get a good coverage and base going across this where the cupcake liner meets the styrofoam ball. And so this is just the best way to do that. Now to attach these flowers in, I am using their three quarter inch straight pins with a pearl top. And I got them at my local Hobby Lobby and Joann's. And I did another project where I used quite a few of them. So I think I wound up buying like six or seven boxes. So I cleaned out a couple of stores to get everything that I needed. And the reason I chose to do it this way is I wanted all of my flowers to have a pearl center, but it was way too daunting to imagine gluing down all the flowers and then trying to go back and glue down all of the centers. And I didn't know exactly how many flowers I was going to need and I didn't want to, you know, glue all the flowers first and then have a bunch of extra flowers with all these pearls and this just seemed to be the easiest way. So once I get a good base going here, I will then work just kind of concentrically building up towards the center. Now as I'm going along and I'm pinning in these flowers, I'm remembering to pinch up the petals to kind of make them look dimensional and that way I can also put the centers as close together as possible so they're really tightly packed on the styrofoam ball. You don't want any gaps even though you have the book page on there. You want those flowers to be as compact as possible. And by pinching up the, the petals and getting everything really dimensional, it just provides really nice dimension and texture to the finished cupcake. The other thing I'm mindful of here as I'm doing this is because I used a variety of colors, I don't want clumps of colors on my cupcake. So I don't want a big splotch of purple and a big splotch of blue. I kind of want my colors to be spread out over the whole cupcake to give it a really nice, soft, variegated color palette. And in the end, it reminds me of the hydrangeas I grow in my backyard where the purples and the blues kind of blend in and then you get a hint of yellow or a gold. And so I was really mindful of my flower placement and if I had you know, if I grabbed two purples, I tried to make sure the next one that went in was a blue in that section just to give it some variation in the color. And again, it just made the finished product look really pretty, I think. So I'm just finishing up here, adding the last few flowers. And the closer you get to the top, the tighter you can kind of push the flowers in together. And um, it just looks really... I was really happy with how this turned out. I thought it was really pretty. And I like the texture that the writing on the paper and then the pinching up of the petals gives the cupcake. So that's how it's gonna look roughly sitting on the cake board. So now I finally committed to gluing it down with some hot glue. And this actually held up really, really well. I can't, um, the hot glue was a good choice in this case for me and the climate that I work in. So once I get it glued down initially, I think I go back and fill in any gaps just to make sure that it's securely attached. And then after that, I did have to do some editing on this because I worked on this project over the course of two or three days. So this is a different day. And after coming up and looking at the project, I decided I wanted to put a doily underneath the cupcake. So what you see there is just a hand dyed doily out of my stash. And then I added a stick pin I found when I was rummaging through some stuff in my craft room. And the stick pin was just one I'd made out of some jewelry pearls I had in my stash. And then now you see the base has some lace and some pink uh, pearl trim around it as well. I'm sorry, I thought that I got that caught on camera, but I think my camera cut out when I was filming. 
So all I did was hot glue that lace down to the lip of that cake board. And then I just glued the pink kind of plastic glass pearl trim around the top of that. Now the lace I've had in my stash, I'm sorry, I don't know where it is from. I think I got it in a huge bag at a thrift store. The pink pearl trim I did get at Hobby Lobby and I was just there at my local Hobby Lobby last week, I think, and they still had it. So if, if you do like that pink trim, um, you could check your Hobby Lobby out for that. Now I wanted to make a little flower display on this stand, like a little cluster. So I went through my stash again and just picked out those white roses and those are a combination of I Am Roses flowers and then some flowers that I had picked up at Michael's, oh gosh, probably four or five years ago when they had little packs of flowers in their dollar spot. Um, I haven't seen them since, so I'm sorry. I don't know if you can find something similar. I have a ton, so I haven't bought flowers for projects in ages. What you saw with my hands, my one of my Jane Davenport markers had leaked the hot pink one. And I wound up with hot pink ink all over my hand. It oozed out onto my craft mat. So I had to take a couple minutes and clean up just to make sure I didn't get any of that hot pink mixed in with what I am trying to color the flowers with because it definitely was not the right shade to be working with. And I wound up with pink hands. I still think I have a little bit of pink in the creases on my fingers and it's been like a week. So all I'm doing here is I'm just spraying out that purple Heidi, I'm sorry, purple Heidi Swap spray. And then I sprayed out my Tattered Angels and a little bit of Jane Davenport. And I just took my water and my brush and I hand colored the flowers with the paintbrush. So I would just dip my paintbrush into the puddle of color and then kind of dab it onto the flower. I know that you can spray the color directly onto the flower and I usually use a cake box or something just so the spray doesn't go over everywhere in my room but I didn't have the box set up and I was trying to just be neat and make sure you could kind of see what I was doing so that's why I chose to hand paint them although unfortunately I wound up doing most of it off camera but so I do apologize for that it was really tricky for me to figure out how to craft and make sure I was in frame for you guys so I apologize if you guys were wanting to see that. So once those flowers are all dried, I'm just kind of doing a temporary arrangement, I guess I would call it, on the cake stand just to see how it's going to turn out and see where I might want things to go. And I really, I think I like how that turned out and that's what I wind up doing. And then I also found that key in my stash that I wanted to include as well. Because this paper does have some steampunk elements. There's a you know clock and different things in the paper. So I thought some metal elements would be cute mixed into the display. So now that I'm ready to do the finishing touches, I go ahead and glue that cupcake doily down to the cake stand. And I just try and center it best I can. And then I'm going to start gluing in my flowers here. And I love using hot glue for things like this. I don't have a lot of patience for a true wet glue to dry. Um, people I know use like Fabri-Tac and their Helmars craft glue. I don't have the patience for that. I love hot glue because there's just enough time for me to pull the project or pull what I've glued down up if I've made a mistake. But once I know that's where I want it to go, it dries pretty quick and it's good to go and it holds really well. And... I also like that it's clear, so I'm a huge fan of hot glue for projects like these. I figure when you're doing a mixed media project like this, I'm not super concerned about it being acid free or lasting for a hundred years or anything like that, especially when I'm adding in metal elements and lace and tea dyed pages and all of that. Um, I figure the archival quality of that's out the window, so I'm cool with the hot glue. So I just, when I started my flower cluster here, I glued down the three largest flowers first and then added in kind of my focal element, if you will, which is the key. And then I'm just filling in any holes and gaps with those tiny flowers you see kind of at the bottom there, the bottom of my craft mat. And I'm just filling in again any holes. I don't like it when you peer through a project and you kind of can see the holes and the gaps between things. 
I like everything to be really tight and full and it just looks like this, you know, there's a lot of depth and dimension. So once I get that main focal cluster down, I kind of, as I'm spinning my project around here, I start to realize that the back side of this looks a little naked. And normally that wouldn't bother me if I was putting this on a display or like on a shelf where you're not going to be pulling it out necessarily and looking at the back. But because this is going on a demonstration table, you're going to be able to see this from all sides. And not that it's a big deal if anyone walks around the back side of my table and sees the back side of this with no decoration, but just personally, I thought it could use a little bit more. So I start, once I finish adding all of these flowers in the front, I then take some of the leftover flowers and I'm gonna glue them along the back side. And it takes me a little while to figure out how I want that to look, but I think I settle on four purple flowers just kind of tucked up against the cupcake liner. And so, and I try and space them out so it's kind of evenly spaced, you know, just like every inch or two apart. And I think I get it pretty accurate. Again, I just eyeballed it. I didn't really go in with any measuring. But I just think it adds a little bit to the back and it just makes it look a little bit more complete and it also hit a little bit where some of the hot glue had you know um, squirted out underneath the liner when I glued the line the cupcake liner to the doily so once I get those four flowers glued on I don't like kind of the weird gap that I have between the purple the the flowers, the flower cluster, and then that next small purple flower. To me, it just looks a little odd. Like, at least in the front, it should be fuller and continue around to that. So it looks like it's all kind of one continuous floral concoction on there. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. So here, I'm just fiddling, trying to figure out how I want to fill all of that in. And I thought I could do it you know, by adding some extra flowers in the front, but then I also was toying with the idea of adding some more flowers along the back, but I didn't really like how that looked. I thought it was just too busy. So what I wound up doing is I had two larger flowers left over, and I'm going to add those, kind of you see them there on the side, just to fill in that gap between the first small flower going around the back and that initial cluster. But then in doing that, I just needed two more smaller flowers dyed to fill in. So I found two more of those tiny roses out of my stash, and I'm going to take them off. You can see them where I'm going to place them because they're white on that stand. They're in there, but they're white. So I'm going to take them off, and I'm going to color them. And I do one teal and one purple. And the reason for that is, again, I just want that cluster to look even. So I want it to be a nice blend of purple and teal. I don't want all purple on one side and all teal on the other side. I want it to be blended nicely. So once I get those added in, I fiddle with them a little bit because I had started covering up a lot of the doily in the front. And I think the one on the one side scrunched the doily up a little bit. And so I fiddle with it here, trying to see if I can pull the doily back out if it's or if it's going to stay hidden. And it winds up staying hidden, and I don't think anyone but myself is going to notice. But I thought if I could try and fix it and pull it back out a little bit, I would. But no luck. So... Initially, I was thinking now I was going to be done, but I noticed that there was a couple of imperfections just where my lace had hit my, like where the lace met the blue paper and things that I wasn't super happy with. So I'm trying to figure out what the best thing to do is to add because I don't want to make this super gaudy, but I, I want to make sure that every, it's, kind of well balanced and it has everything on there that I want. So I'm just sitting here kind of spinning it around, racking my brain, trying to see 
and I finally decided on cutting out some butterflies. There are butterflies in that paper. So I thought a couple of butterflies on there would just add, again, another level of height and dimension to the project. So I'm just taking one of the pattern papers. Now this is the pattern paper that most people would cut into strips and use the different strips. But the reason I'm choosing to use that to cut my butterflies out is it just provides a really nice variegated pattern of color across the top of the butterfly wings. And it just looks really pretty because you get the blues and the yellows and the purples and the pinks. And I think for butterfly wings, it just looks really pretty. Again, that was a Martha Stewart punch I've had in my stash and I'm not super sure if it's available anymore. Now, what I'm doing, I punched out six butterflies and then I'm going to take two butterflies and glue them together. So I'm going to leave one flat as it is and then the one that goes on top, I'm going to pinch the wings upwards and fold it kind of in half so that when I glue it together, the top set of wings are up like the butterflies flying and it just gives the butterfly some really pretty dimension. And because I chose that pattern paper where the wings have a ton of different colors on them, they just look really colorful on the display. So I'm just trying to figure out here where I need them to go. One of them I definitely leave down on the right hand side there because it's just covering up a little bit of a gap where you can see just the smallest sliver of the cake board. And then I knew that I wanted to put one up in the cupcake because the cupcakes are covered in flowers and I just think it adds some really pretty, just an extra decoration to the cupcake and some nice height and dimension to it as well. Now the butterfly on the left there, on the left side of the cake board, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it there or not. So we'll see what happens when I do the final so I'm almost done here guys and I'm going to do one real quick spin of the pedestal and then I will come back with a final reveal. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye.